and kindness and his tender mercies unto us this afternoon. We count ourselves privileged to have the opportunity to talk about the word of the Lord. We honor him today because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank him for his manifold blessings unto us. And if it had not been for the Lord who's on our side, we certainly do not know what we would do. We take opportunity to say thank you, Jesus, over and over again. We praise him. We magnify him. Particularly in this time of crises and pandemic, this world virus that is going on and seem is not letting up at all. But we certainly know that our God is in control. And we trust him. We put our trust, our confidence in the Lord's qualified, capable hands. And if you love him, and I believe that many of you do, let us magnify him. Let us praise him during this particular time. Let's not waste any time being depressed, being overwhelmed, having spiritual panic attacks, but let us lift up that glorious name of Jesus Christ that never fails. I like to think whatever is in us, it comes out when we're under pressure. In this time of pandemic where we cannot have service like we would love to, but yet at the same time, I'm encouraging not only Bethany Apostolic Church here in the heart of Evansville, Indiana, to make your home your sanctuary. Take some time to pray. Get on your knees and pray and cry out to God. Yes, for yourself and your family, but also for this lost and dying world and for your brothers and sisters all around the world. We need one another and we need to come together as a church family as a universal church and take time to pray for our president and those counselors pray for that the hospital the, not only the physicians and the nurses that we hear so much about but pray for that everyone that is working at that hospital around the around the world and pray for everyone that keeps that hospital operating pray for the families that have lost loved ones during this time of pandemic and pray for those that have this virus and they're in the hospital looking to get well and that we pray for them and the first responders certainly we have so much to pray for during the month of march and even now that so many people i've known have, have gone on to be with the lord but since the lord has kept you and i in the land of the living let us not forget to magnify god let us not forget to thank god Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made we shall rejoice and be glad in it and I want to do that when we come to those impasse in our lives we feel like we don't know what to do feel like we're coming apart at the scene and I know that during this time so many of us feel like that but I want you to know that our God is still on the throne he has not advocated the throne he is still doing great and wonderful things. Folks are still getting saved. Folks are still getting the Holy Ghost. Don't you allow the devil to make you think that God is not concerned about you. I know he is. I know he is. And keep in mind, you take opportunity to talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord how you feel. And I'm sure that he will let his presence be felt upon you. I believe that he still can do the impossible. And we trust in the Lord, we embrace the Lord, we hold on to the Lord, we love the Lord, and we're going forward in Jesus' name. I want you to know this afternoon, this Bible class, that Pastor Fraser is still cutting this step. <laughs> I'm still shouting, I'm still praising the Lord, I'm still worshiping, I'm still singing. I don't sing very well, but I'm still singing, and I'm still giving God some praise. What kind of pastor would I be? What kind of clergyman would I be? When trouble come, I can't raise my hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I think about Moses and Aaron. When trouble came in the camp of Israel, the first thing they would do is hit those knees. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Even David, when trouble came, he would always petition the Lord. Lord, do I go up? What do I do? And keep in mind, the Lord has told us to pray.
pray without ceasing. That means constantly. The Bible says that men ought to always pray and not faint. I'm a believer of that. I believe that. I believe that prayer still works. So we're praying this afternoon, this Bible study prior to getting started. We're praying for you. We're praying for you. Take time. Hear what I'm saying. Take time to get in contact with your God. Take time to pray. Take time to tell him how you feel. Take time to ask God for direction. Take time to ask God to redirect your mind, redirect your spirit. And I'm sure that he will. Those of you that are from our church, Bethany Apostolic Church, coming from Evansville, Indiana, and our website is BethanyApostolic212.org. All the information that you need about the church, you'll find it there. Also, our email, and if you want to give, you can give there too. But it's BethanyApostolic212.org. If you are in a place that you can bow your head, I want you to pray with us. I want you to pray with us. I'm concerned about you. I'm concerned about... Uh, your family, I'm concerned about our prayer list, and I'm concerned about the visitors that uh, come frequently to our church. Uh, some I haven't seen for a while because of this pandemic, but I want you to know that God is able. By the way, prior to praying, by the way, Bethany is opened. We are observing social distancing. So when you come here, you'll see on the porch of our church, you'll see a big sign that says, no mass, no service. And then at the bottom, you'll see something that says, I am my brother's keeper. We have all the necessary things here to keep you safe. And when you come, I want you to feel safe. And we have social distancing here. We have masks, et cetera, et cetera, all the things that are necessary to keep us safe. Not only that, when you come here, I want you to be able to praise and magnify God with dignity and in honor, which he so much deserves. So keep in mind, keep in mind, the Lord touches your heart. The Lord touches your heart. Say amen. I want you to come. And God bless you. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time you've given us to come together on this medium that's called Facebook and YouTube. We ask, O oh God, those that are going through the difficulties of life, those, O oh God, that are overwhelmed, those, O oh God, that are feeling anxious, we ask, O oh God, give them comfort through your word. Those, O oh God, that are in fear, you said, you said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. I pray, O oh God, for those in the hospitals, those that are sick, those families that have lost loved ones. We just pray, O oh God, for your help. Guide us. We don't know when this pandemic is going to be over. But we ask God, keep us, Lord, in the hollow of your hands. Your hands are more qualified. They're more capable than ours. Father, we need you. We need you. We pray for the people of God all around the world. We pray for the governments that they'll find a solution. But more importantly, Lord, I pray that they cry out to you. We ask, O oh God, in these things, in the name of Jesus Christ that never fails, in Jesus' name, amen and amen again. Well, I'm certainly happy that you've taken uh, your time to uh, come to this Bible class and, and view it and listen uh, this afternoon. Uh, we are on Facebook uh, every Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. and we would certainly love to to hear from you. I have told the church, those of us that belong to Bethany Apostolic Church, I've told them, I say we have a virtual audience and I want you to know that we're concerned about you. We look and see uh, various ones that have uh, made some type of comment and we thank you for it. Some as far as Arizona, some in uh, Georgia and other places uh, around the country, Michigan and other places. And I want you to know genuinely, we're concerned about you. We're going to start something, uh, hopefully, within the month of prayer list. And if you want to put your name on that prayer list of someone you're concerned about, uh, please contact 
our website at BethanyApostolic212.org. And I want you to know that we're just not talking. We will be praying for you. Somebody in this last time, somebody in these trying times needs to pray. I want you to know that every pastor, every preacher is not a crook. Somebody is really praying. And this church, and I do, I pray. I pray. I need prayer. Prayer keeps me healthy. Prayer keeps my mind straight. Prayer keeps me, gives me peace. Prayer gives me that a solace that I need. Uh, prayer is my place of sanctuary. And prayer, prayer, prayer can do what nothing else can do. I believe prayer still works. So in the future, near future, we want to try to get a prayer list. And if you will uh, contact our website, Bethany Apostolic 212, we'll put your name on that prayer list. Well, God bless you, and thank you once again for tuning in to us. Uh, we're going to start something tonight, just a short little, little class tonight, study tonight. And it's called Our Present Time is Seed Time. Our present time is seed time. Under that, you'll find this saying. In the other world, we shall reap as we sow now. Our present time is seed time. Now, when I say that, I want you to understand that we are seeding our life, our spiritual life now. So there be a harvest in the life to come. Now, I want you to follow us. The Bible says, Whatsoever man soweth, that also shall he reap. And so often we're looking for the material things in this now life. But in actuality, you're sowing a spiritual life. So at the time, at the time that you leave this life, that you close your eyes to this life, you have sold in God. You have sold to your spirit so that God will cause you to have a harvest of reaping of eternal life. I told somebody the other day, I said, it's bad enough to die once. I don't want to die twice. Oh, hallelujah. I want to read a couple of things to you tonight in uh, starting. And that's Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. I'm reading from two Bibles. Number one, the first Bible I'm reading out of is called God's Word. God's Word Bible. All right, verse 7 of Galatians chapter 6. Make no mistake about this. You can never make a fool out of God. Whatever you plant is what you're going to harvest. Verse 8. If you plant in the soil or of your corrupt nature, you will harvest destruction. But if you plant in your spiritual nature, you will harvest everlasting life. Verse 9. We can't allow ourselves to get tired of living the right, what, the right way. Pardon me. Certainly, each of us will receive at the proper time if we don't give up. And that's everlasting life. Number 10. Whenever we have the opportunity, we have to do what is good for everyone, especially for the family of believers. Now also I'm going to read out of uh, our King James Version. This is the Bible that we normally use, but I thought I, I wanted to give you some information and read it out of another context. And of course I read a number of Bibles. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 through 10 and this is coming from the King James Version. And Paul says this. He is, this is writing from his journal. And he tells the church of Galatia this. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also 
3. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I want to read that again. And let us, us, those that have been redeemed, those that have been born again, those that have the Spirit of God, those that are in the church of the living God, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, this means that God has a time for us, each and every one of us. In due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You don't have to faint. My God, my God, my God. The Bible says that we faint in a time of adversity. It means that our strength was small. We depend upon God. Many times we're praying, tell God, say, Lord, you said, you said, I'm here, I'm going through, I'm holding my head up, I'm taking a stand, and I need your help. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So this is what we're going to talk about tonight in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 through 10. I'm going to take my time tonight. I may uh, take a little time but I may quit a little soon. God bless your heart. It's really depending upon how God leads us tonight. And I'm coming from uh, this particular passage of scripture Galatians chapter uh, 6. And I would encourage you to read it, it in its entirety at a time of leisure and I ask God to allow you the understanding of this particular passage of Scripture. Once again, this is the Apostle Paul. He is talking to the church community of Galatia. They are baptized in Jesus' name. They are filled with the person power of the Holy Spirit. And every now and then, all of us, irregardless as to who we are, how long we've been saved, how long we've been walking with God, we need some encouragement. We need somebody to tell us to go ahead. We need to know that God is still walking with us and we are still doing those things that he desires for us to do. I'd like to think that all of us, regardless as to who you are, that the test and trial does not come to knock us out of the race, does not come to cause us to quit, but it comes that we may draw closer to the Lord, that our dependency is upon Him. It's not upon some friend, somebody, but it's upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have the assurance that He has told us that He would never leave us nor forsake us. And that should give us strength, that should give us encouragement in the times that we so desperately need Him. Verse 7, God is not mocked. My God, my God. The God Word Bible says that you can't fool God. And I'm a believer of that. You cannot fool God. It's insanity for someone to think that they can get something over on God. Just because God does not act right quickly in terms of giving us our just due, that does not mean that we are getting by. It certainly means that this is the grace and mercy of our God. And I'm so happy, so happy that he has mercy. I don't know about you, but I need mercy all the time. I need grace all the time. Ah, hallelujah. Even the Bible lets us know that his compassion, his mercy is new every morning. My God, my God. Lord, I thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. Was it not psalmist that declared that weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy cometh in the morning. My God, my God. So, God is not mocked. The Greek verb 
is literally to sneer with the nostrils, draw up to contempt. God does not suffer himself to be imposed on by empty words. He's not concerned about empty words. My God, my God. He is omnipotent. He possesses all power and authority. What can man do? Ah, hallelujah. The arrogance and pride, pride of man. They take their fist and shake it toward heaven like this is going to detour God. My God, my God, my God. He is omnipotent. All power, all authority. He is omniscient. He knows all there is to know. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. My God, my God, my God. The writer says, if I take the wings of the morning, make my bed in hell, he said, God is there. He's everywhere. My God, my God. The one thing I love about God, God is omnibenevolent. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so glad that he's a loving God. A God that cares about us. In actuality, he cares more about us than we do ourselves. And one thing, we can depend on God. So many folks let you down, we can depend on God. He will judge according to works. He judges according to works. And there is, there is no, 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 no variance in God. There's no shadow of turning in God. And God does not have any respect a person my god my god which are seeds sown by eternity to either joy or woe once again i want you to know that we are sowing seeds right now right now and in our future there will be either joy or woe excuses illiberty in God's cause seem valid before men but not so before God God knows us he knows us he knows who we are where we are and when he saves us he puts enough inside of us so that we can overcome any test any trial any difficulty that we are confronting and once we understand cognitively, once it resonates inside of us, the power of God, the authority of God, my God, my God, hallelujah, we rest in his divine word. That he has exactly what I need at the time that I need it. It's absurd for me to be a child of God in the kingdom of God. New nature, new possibility. And when I'm in the kingdom of God and everything is at my disposal and I refuse to use it. Oh, hallelujah. It means now since I know how to walk, since I know how to serve him, since I know how to live before him, he requires that of me. Everything that I'm doing now in this life, I'm sowing. I'm sowing. My God, my God. And the harvest that I'm looking for is eternal life. My God, my God. I'm not worried about the naysayers. Let them go ahead and talk. But let me keep my relationship, your relationship with your God. My Lord, my Lord. And when you pray, you know he's going to answer your prayer. Now, he says, soweth. Soweth. Especially of resources. Soweth, soweth. I'm sowing now. I'm not sowing to this old carnal flesh. No, no. I'm sowing. I'm sowing. I'm doing those things that God has told me to do. I take opportunity to talk to folks about salvation. I take opportunity to make it my business intentionally, on purpose, to do what's right. To encourage the saint. To offer salvation to the lost. 
to tear the downtrodden that there is an alternative lifestyle. You don't have to allow the devil to ruin your life. He is no longer your master. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for you to set you free. You are, are somebody in God. Don't have to hang your head down. Hold your head up. Begin to magnify and praise your God. Start sowing some good seed. You want some good things to happen in your life? Start sowing some good seed. And watch things turn around. And so often we think this is only uh, talking about the material things. A good friend of mine years ago, he's passed now. He preached a sermon. And I think I may have preached it around here too. <laughs> he said... It's coming up again. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Sow some good seeds. Sow some good seeds. That, Greek, this, this and nothing else. I've got to sow what God has told me to sow. Don't think, don't think. You sow corn and you're going to get okra. Not at all, not at all. Whatever you sow, Whatever you sow, that's the thing that's going to come up. You sow a good life. You sow a good life. You can expect God to do the rest. You sow a life of humility. You sow a life of servitude toward God and people. God will recognize that. This is what Paul is trying to convey to his hearers. You've got to sow if you want to reap. And you've got to sow good things if you want to reap good things. Reap. At the harvest, the end of the world. This is found in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 39. The harvest, the harvest is the end of the world. My God, my God. And Jesus Christ is the Lord of the harvest. My God, my God. Sow some good seed. Sow some good seed. My God, my God, when trouble come, trouble come, trouble come, have that confidence in God. Trust in God. My God, my God. That thing, that thing that seems like uh, pulls the rug out from under you. God's going to take care of you. God's going to take care of you. He promised to do it. All he wants you to do is sow the right thing. Sow some good seed. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't let the enemy make you uh, fall into a victim mentality. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Hallelujah. You've got to roll with the punches. The wind comes, the storm comes. Keep on sowing, keep on sowing. And look for God to do some marvelous things in your life. Start looking for God. Start looking for God. When you start sowing some good seed, it's going to come up. It's going to come up. Start sowing that to this spiritual, uh, your spirituality. Hallelujah. And sometimes you got to let go of thinking about so many material things. The scripture tells us in Matthew around chapter 6 and verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Start sowing some spiritual seed. My God, my God, my God. And you watch God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 8. Translate. He that soweth unto his own flesh. He that soweth unto his own flesh. My God, my God. And note what Paul says. Paul says flesh. We talked about that in one of our previous Bible classes. That old nature. That old nature. That old you. That old you. I often say many times here at Bethany Apostolic Church that many times once we feel like we are humiliated, that old flesh wants to retaliate. That means whatever the flesh wants to do, it will take every opportunity it can to do it. When you walk in the spirit, you are always right. The flesh will always do you wrong. You cannot save the flesh. You cannot transform the flesh. The flesh will be the flesh. 
There dwelleth no good thing in the flesh. That means yours and mine. And many times when you allow the flesh to lead and guide you, that's when the trouble comes. That's when the difficulty comes. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He that soweth, soweth to the flesh. First of all, understand that your flesh is corrupt. It's corrupt. Your flesh and my flesh is corrupt. It can't serve God. It's not subject to God. It's carnal. Neither indeed can be. It is always going to stand in opposition to God. It is always going to be a violator of the truths and principles of God. It is always going to deceive you. The Bible said this about the old heart. I think it was Jeremiah. It is deceitful above all things. And the Bible says that it's desperately wicked. My God, my God, my God. He that soweth, soweth, incorporate, put, soweth to the flesh. My God, my God. It's only two things you can do. You sow to the flesh or you sow to the spirit. There is no place of neutrality. With a view of fulfilling its desires. The Bible also says in Galatians around chapter 5. Uh, between verses 16 and 19. The Bible says if we walk in the spirit. We shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now I want you to know my brothers and sisters. That he's not talking about your gait. He's not talking about walking in single file. He's talking about living. Living living, walking, living in the Spirit. How do we live by the Spirit? Well, the Bible tells us in the Gospel of John, chapter 6 and verse 63. It tells us that His Word is Spirit and life. His Word is Spirit in life. So let us understand when we walk in the Spirit, that we walk according to the Word of God. And how do we do that? Through faith? Yes, yes, yes. How does faith come? By hearing the word of God. He does not say his spirit as he does say his flesh. So he makes a distinction between uh, the fleshly nature and the spiritual nature. And I'm sure, I'm sure that you can uh, know the contrast. When you are walking in the spirit, it means that you are pleasing God. You're doing those things that really makes God happy. When you're walking in the flesh, you're walking according to your own own nature. And, and folks know that. So don't fool yourself. You know whether you're walking in God's spirit or you're walking in the flesh. We walk in the spirit. We have the peace of God. We have the calm of God. We walk in the flesh. And particularly if you say you're a child of God. It means that... Uh, Something ought to tell you. The Bible tells you if your heart condemns you, God is greater. So keep in mind, the enemy wants to pull you out from Christian character. He wants to pull you out of the hand of God. But you cannot get out of the hand of God when you're walking in the Spirit and doing those things that God has called us to do, being the people of God. For in ourselves, we are not spiritual in ourselves that flesh we are not spiritual in ourselves we go according to our own flesh our own thoughts our own ideas that scripture that i use quite frequent and uh, you may say pastor Ray, you lose use that last week and i'm going to use it again proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 trust in the lord oh hallelujah trust in the lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. I made the statement that it is insanity. Being a child of God. And you are leaning to your own understanding. Your own way of doing things. That is nothing but the flesh. And it's nothing but pride. And that's one thing that God cannot tolerate. That is arrogance, a proud look, and pride. And he cannot he cannot tolerate your flesh in my flesh. So therefore, 
if I'm walking in the flesh, I am sowing in the flesh. And since my flesh is corrupt. And, and by the way, I gave reference on last uh, Tuesday night saying that the flesh or your body is not saved and it's not alive because that body has to be quickened. That body is geared around this old ungodly world and its senses is as well. Oh, hallelujah. For in ourselves we are not spiritual, in ourselves that flesh, but carnal, 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 carnal. The word carnal, carnal, it deals with it deals with flesh. Flesh. Carnal, the word carnivorous. Flesh, flesh. And that means that it is in opposition toward God. Everything that the flesh does is in opposition toward the Spirit of God. That's the battle that we have. It's not with your brothers and sisters. It's not with the foreman at the workplace, not with the supervisor. It's not with your children, not with your husband. It's with your flesh. The flesh wants what it wants. It wants its own desire. And once we come to that place to realize that, we'll be better off. When we walk in the Spirit, we walk according to the Word of God. When you're not accustomed to doing that, it's difficult, it's hard. But when you learn how to do it, Learn by the grace of God how to serve him. That scripture in Matthew chapter 11 becomes reality. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, hallelujah. The flesh is devoted to selfishness. Anytime, anytime, anytime that flesh rises up, it wants its own way. It wants it in marriages. It wants it with parents and children. It wants it in church. It wants it at the schoolroom, in the neighborhood, the workplace. It wants its own way. Your spirit that is transformed wants to serve God. Jesus, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, made a statement. He said, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Your flesh and my flesh will always be weak. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that now, now in this life, our present time is seed time. It's seed time. We are sowing so that we will have a harvest in the end. Oh, hallelujah. We're looking at a word called corruption. You've heard it. Paul uses this phrase in... Uh, I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And that's a marvelous passage of scripture. I would certainly would encourage you to read it in its entirety. Corruption. That is destruction compared as to deliverance of believers from corruption. This means that the Lord has already delivered us. Listen, when you have been born again, when you have gone through the processes of spiritual nativity, everything that God has for you is yours right now. Hmm. Now, how can I say that? How can I say that? Jesus Christ looked at uh, his hearers, perhaps even his opponents, and he said that the kingdom of God is within you. My God, my God. Lord, you mean to tell me that I have the kingdom of God already in me? Yes. Yes. The only thing that has not changed is your body. My God, my God, my God. Mm. The only thing that hasn't changed is your body. It has to be quickened. So we live by the word of God. We trust him. We obey him. And my brothers and sisters... If the kingdom of God is within me, I have to live like a kingdom citizen. I cannot afford to let this body do what it wants to do because it has a mind of its own. I cannot let this surrounding, this environment dictate to me how to live. 
Because even though I'm in the world, I'm not of the world. It means that God resides in me. I'm in the kingdom of God. My God, my God, my God. And I must understand that this body is corrupt and this body will go to the ground. And one day, according to the Apostle Paul, speaking to the church of the of Thessalonians, that one day he's going to quicken this body, he's going to call us. And that's called the rapture, that snatching, that catching away. Ah, if I'm a believer, I must believe that he has delivered me from this body, even though I'm living in this body, even though this old nature, he has empowered me by the Holy Spirit. He has given me the resources, the tools, and has stood by me that I'm capable of living the life of holiness. Not by my power, but by the God that lives inside of me. Not only me, but you too. You too. You too. To use the term corruption instead implies that destruction is not an arbitrary punishment of fleshly mindedness. Now I want you to stay with me. But is its natural fruit, it means that it produces corruption. In your study in scripture, Jesus Christ, the master teacher, made a profound statement. He says, you know a tree by the fruit that it bears. My, 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 my. He would teach so profoundly to those 12 men that he had handpicked that would have this awesome task to change the face of religious osity. He said, now, men are not trees, but I give you an illustration that every tree that you observe you know what kind of tree it is because of what it produces. We know an apple tree simply because it produces apples. Now I say that in simplicity because an apple tree is an apple tree if it does not have any apples on it. But what Jesus was trying to get them to understand in this critical teaching class that he had with his disciples is that some trees produce corrupt fruit. You know, as a youngster, I'd love to go pick apples and et cetera, et cetera. And there was just some trees that always had apples that you could not eat. They were so bad. They were looked rotten, they looked disfigured, it was just bad. And the tree produced those. And so what the Lord is trying to tell us is that people are the same. This old nature is the same way. In other words, you cannot get something good out of something that is bad. And this is in actuality what Jesus is trying to say. Fruit here meant the ideal produce. What comes from, what comes out of that particular person or for our particular purpose, man that has not been regenerated, has not been transformed. Nature or fruit. The corrupt flesh, corrupt flesh, old nature, producing corruption. That's all that the old corrupt nature will ever produce is corruption. Well, Pastor Frazier, there's some folks that do righteous things. Have you not read in your uh, Christian tutelage that even the writer says that his righteousness was as filthy rags? Opposed or standing against the righteousness of God. Which is another word for destruction. 
corruption and destruction, they are synonymous. Corruption is the fault. And corruption, the punishment. So if I sow to my flesh corruption, it's going to reap corruption, destruction, or punishment. Future life only expands the seed that is sown. Future life only expands the seeds that are sown. So I've got to sow to my spirit if I want everlasting life. My God, my God. Isn't it something if, if that life, which is that fleshly or natural life, is corrupt, is destructive, I must understand that the spiritual life is alive. And since I'm sowing to alive things, God is going to give me everlasting life. Men cannot mock God because they can deceive themselves. And men make the tempt all the time in mocking God. And that does not detour God from his word. From his promise that he's made to those that will sow to the spirit. They who sow tares, this is found in Matthew, those who sow tares cannot reap wheat. So those that sow a corrupt life, sow to the flesh, you cannot inherit eternal life. You cannot sow corn and look for okra. It's impossible. You cannot live a, a life of in the flesh and look in the end to have everlasting life. That's one trick of the enemy. I've heard so many people over the years would tell you about the thief on the cross. My, 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 my. I would not wait until uh, you have your dying breath and trying to see God. I would do it now while the blood is yet running warm in your veins. I would do it now while you can breathe God's air. I would do it now while you can raise your hand to the authority of God and say, Lord, I surrender. I would do it now. They alone reap life eternal. Who sold to the Spirit. My God, my God. I must sow to the Spirit of God if I expect to have life everlasting. And my, I don't know about you, but I tell you what, when my time comes, I want to wake up in glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to see his face in peace. My God, my God. I don't want any sin. I don't want any errors, I don't want any faults, I don't want any fractions hanging on me. No, no, no. This is why I'm sowing to the Spirit. I'm going to treat you right. Do me wrong. I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to treat you right. And you know what? Yes, I'm going to say it. I'm going to cut my step too. I'm going to stay happy in the Lord. You know what? Let me tell you something. I'm digressing a little more. But I enjoy Hear me what I'm saying. I enjoy feeling the presence of the Lord. <laughs> I want to throw my hands up. I want to cut my step. I want to say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But I enjoy feeling the presence of God. Whether I'm here at church praising God, whether I'm home praising God, whether I'm in my car praising God, I love feeling the presence of the Lord. My God, my God. I love singing to him as well. Can't sing too good, but I'm still singing. The Bible says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. And I'm doing that. Verse 9. And when we do good. Now hear what I'm saying. When we do good. And every child of God that professed to be a Christian. Ought to have in their heart and mind to do good. To do good. That means do good to folks that treat you bad. Still do good. Treat them right. 
and those that love you still do good. My God, my God. Wherever God sends you, make sure you do good. Why? Because you represent him. You become an ambassador of the kingdom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And when we do good, let us also preserve in it without fainting. My, my, my. That means stand strong. That means stand strong. When you do good, don't become tired and weary in doing good. Ought to be happy about doing doing good, doing the right thing. And sometimes folks get weary doing good because they look for relief right away. Hmm. But once you have a nature of doing good, a mindset of doing the right thing, it's always tough when you're not accustomed of doing what's right. It's always tough when you have to declare to the Lord, Lord, I'm changing. This is what I want to do. Uh, my feet is planted. This is what I want to follow. And I know many times when you make up your mind to do what's right, it seems like everything that will happen will happen. When it rains, it pours. But doing right and doing good, you forever will be blessed. God will work in your behalf. Well, Pastor Frazier, can I start doing good? Yes, you can start doing good right now. And yes, God will bless you. The Bible tells us in due season, in due season, in due season, God's got a season for you. Mm -hmm. In due season. It may not be your time, but it's your season. In due season. In its own proper season, God's own time. God's got a time for you. He's got a time for me. My God, my God. In due season. In due season. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Hallelujah. Your season is coming. You weeped in tears, but your season is coming. You, you've hung in there. A lot of folks are used to bees. You stayed there. You stayed strong. You made your mind up. You planted your feet. You said, I'm not moving. I'm trusting in God. I'm obeying God. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. But I'm waiting for God to bring me out. And sometimes folks will laugh. They'll scorn. They'll mock you. They'll tease you. But you stay with God. Stay with God. Embrace God. Hold on to him. Take a strong hold on God. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, my God. When are changing times. The storm, the winds are blowing. But you plant your feet strong in the word of God. You may bend, but you won't break. My God, my God, my God. God will bring you through. God will bring you through. Don't you give up. Don't throw on the towel. Don't you quit. Hallelujah. He's brought you too far for you to quit. My God, in due season, God's got a time for you. Your time will come. Sometime you look at everybody else and seem like they're blessed. Going on their merry way. It's like there's no problem, no difficulty. Every time you see them, they got a smile and this, that, and you don't fool yourself. They have learned now in God how to roll with the punches, how to stay there, how to give God praise in advance. They're thinking, my God, my God. They have become a soldier. Hallelujah. They know how to stand. They know how to hear the voice of the Lord and keep going forward. They have made up in their mind. My season's not here, but I'm not going to faint. I'm not going to become weary. Ah, no, no, no. Not to faint. Literally, to be relaxed. Stronger than. Be not weary. Weary of well-doing refers to the will. 
faint not to relaxation of the powers. No one should faint as in an earthly harvest sometimes happens. Now what this means right here, and I'll say it to you very clearly. It means in a time of harvest, when they're harvesting the wheat, that they're weary, they're tired, and many times they faint, they drop. Now, on our journey, there are times that we become tired and weary, but don't faint. The Bible says we faint in a time of adversity. It means that our strength was small. One writer says that it simply means that we were just weak. God is able to give you strength. I want to tell you that. If you never have any tests and trials in your life, how do you know what your God can do? I like this scripture in 1 Peter 5 and 7. Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. My God, my God, my God. Know that nobody else has done this but the Lord. He's the one that brought you out. He's the one that delivered you. So don't get weary in well-doing. In due season, due season. Now, keep in mind, this only comes to individuals that have made it up in their mind that I'm not going to faint. Not going to faint. My, 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 my. And that must be soundly placed in your heart. I'm not going to faint. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. Come too far to turn around now. All right. All right. Verse 10 translates. So then according as that is in proportion as we have seasoned. That is, we have even the opportunity to work good things. My, 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 my. We do good as Christians when all the time. All the time we are doing those things that are good. It means good. As thou art able, while thou art able, and when you are able, always doing good. Take time to read Ecclesiastes chapter 10, pardon me, chapter 9 and verse 10. I'll give you time, write that down. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10. We have now the season for sowing. Can't wait later. We have now the season for sowing. As also there will be hereafter a due season for reaping. Make sure that you're sowing to the Spirit. There's going to be a season for reaping. Right now, right now, the present, we should be sowing. We should be sowing, we should be sowing, because reaping time is going to come. We should sing a song years ago uh, in, in Terre Haute, Indiana, a church called Bethlehem Temple, there at uh, 13th and Washington Street, and the Honorable uh, Bishop J. Glenn Purnell is a pastor there. I advise you, if you're in that area, stop by there. They'll be happy to see you. We sang a song years ago, Get Your Time In. Payday is coming after a while. My God, my God, if you had not started sowing to the Spirit, I would encourage you to do so. The whole life is, in one sense, the seasonable opportunity to us and in a narrow sense there occur in it more especially convenient seasons the latter are sometimes lost in looking for still more convenient seasons or people look for a convenient time 
I made the statement that procrastination is the murder of the soul. Don't you wait. Don't you wait. Don't you wait. Was it Felix in Acts chapter 24 and verse 25? When Paul gave that profound testimony, and Felix says, well, I'll do this or hear this at a convenient time. Well, history says he never came back. Anytime God embarks upon your heart to make change in your life, don't hesitate. Do it now. We should not always have the opportunity. We have now. Satan is sharpening to the greater zeal in injuring the church, us, by the shortness of the time. That means that he knows his time is short and he's doing everything he possibly can do. And if he's not battling, fighting your mind, he will. Let us sharpen to the greater zeal in well-doing by the shortness of our time. Let us give God what he's asking for. Then, who are the household? chapter in verse 10 it is those that have been redeemed those that have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ those that have gone through this process of spiritual activity those that lay claim to Christendom and follow God with all their heart the Bible tells us that we ought to be hospitable to everyone but especially to the house of God I'm not through tonight, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to stop uh, in just a few moments. But I want you to know, my brother and sister, that if there's ever a time that we need to take our sewing seriously, it is now. It is now. And especially in this pandemic where this thing has taken so many lives. I think if I'm somewhat correct tonight, over 190 some uh, lives have been lost since the month of March. And obviously they're expecting at least over 200 some thousand people before this year is out. And God has blessed you to be in the land of living one more time. And I would certainly encourage you to seek the Lord. The Bible says, well, he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. My brothers and sisters, when it seems like life is not going your way, it seems like you're in despair and everything is coming unglued. Start sowing. Start sowing to your spirit. Start giving God those things that are necessary to be a Christian, a child of God. Reflect on yourself. Take a self-inventory. Evaluate. Look at self. Not everybody else. And make sure, make sure you are what God says you are. You have what God says you have. And if not, make sure you get it. Don't let anybody. I don't care who, who it is. Don't let anybody cause you to come out of up under Christian character. God has done so much for us, so many wonderful things. My God, my God, whatsoever man soweth, that also shall he reap. This is why I think that our country is in so much problem, because the Bible says righteousness exalted the nation and sins approach the end people. My God, we suffer because of what our country has sold. We suffer many times because of what our parents have sold. And your children sometimes suffer because of what you have sold. So once you come to the place in your journey, your walk with God, and you find out that you're going the wrong way, stop, turn around. It's, 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 it's asinine, it's absurd, it's insanity for somebody going to the designation, going the wrong way, and you keep on going. There ought to be a time that something tells us that I'm going the wrong way. And that means let's stop. Tonight, my brother and sister, it's entirely up to you. I've tried to touch a few things. Maybe you understood, maybe you did not. But I certainly want to tell you that whoever sows to this flesh, you shall reap corruption. You sow to your spirit, you shall reap life everlasting. And I want you to know that the Lord of the harvest, he's going to come back for his precious, his precious harvest. And I sense sometime that 
perhaps this is not so far off in the future. Perhaps this is closer than what we really think. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't let this world get you upset. Don't let this world hold you in its, in its grip where you can't praise and magnify God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And this last time, I know I'm talking just a little bit. I'm off base, maybe, but I'm in the ballpark. In these last times, if you can get a prayer through, my God, if you can feel the presence of the eternal God, hallelujah, hallelujah, a time where it seems like the peace of mind of so many have, have just gone folks just trying to cling on to anything that will give them peace of mind and assurance. What this nation needs to do is come back to God. Even on our money, it says, in God we trust. Is that a lie to us? Or do we trust God? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So much fear, and many times in the Christian themselves. Lord, Keep our minds, keep our hearts, keep our spirit stayed on thee. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, when you seek the Lord and petition the Lord, when you give yourself to him, I want you to understand that he will help you, he will guide you, he will strengthen you. And so often we, we just need the Lord, need the Lord, his assurance. There's nothing like having peace with God. And I think sometimes, and I'm trying to quit, I think sometimes it, it's, it's difficult for us to just step out of our own inhibitions, what people think about me. If I say this, if I do this, if I give my heart to the Lord, if I become vulnerable, if I step out of my own inhibitions, my God, my God. Don't you know that the Lord cannot help you when you do not want to give yourself completely to him? But when you do, oh, hallelujah, you talk about a weight off of your shoulder. Hmm. Where you can just come to the Lord and say, Lord, I love you. I appreciate you. I thank you. And even in prayer, sometimes you just don't know what to say. But you really know that you just need to get on your knees and just pour your spirit out to the Lord. And he'll refresh in your spirit. My brothers and sisters, my friend, look to the Lord. So to your spirit. And God will give you eternal life. You have it now. The key thing, we need to keep it. Your victory is certain. Don't detour. If you are there and you desire prayer, I want you just to bow your head with us. This is just Bishop Frazier at Bethany Apostolic Church, Evansville, Indiana, on this little short Bible study. My God, my God. Now is the time to sow. We're sowing now. We're sowing now. Everything now, we're sowing it. We're sowing it song to God that we might have everlasting life. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. If you had a place you can bow your head, you can raise your hands, I'm asking that you do so. And we're going to pray together. Gracious God, we thank you because you are God all by yourself. Oh God, we pray right now for that father, that mother. We pray, oh God, that's worried about those children. We pray, oh God, right now for those children, Lord God. Help them, Lord. Stand by them. We pray for that son, that daughter. Lord, God is wayward. We pray, O oh God, the decisions that need to be made. We ask, O oh God, touch their heart. Touch the spirit. We pray, O oh God, for the backslidden. We pray, O oh God, for the apostate. We pray, O oh God, for that marriage. We pray, O oh God, for that heart, that soul. Lord God, that one in the hospital right now, right now. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. Even that sick list that we had last night, we're praying for every precious heart on that sick list. Praying, oh God, for brothers and sisters, Lord, that you would touch, that you would touch. 
that you would turn their life around, that you would cause them to realize that you are a healer, not only of the body, but also of the spirit. Father, we need you. We need you. Let us not be ashamed, O oh God, to self-disclose, to become vulnerable, that you, O oh God, can do for us the things that you always do, and that's to save, that's to deliver, that is to encourage, that is to inspire. We ask, O oh God, even right now, as we pray, let your word be touched in the hearts of these individuals. Father, we appreciate you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. This is Bishop G.W. Frazier, Sr., pastor of Bethany Apostolic Church in the heart of Evansville, Indiana. Our website is Bethany apostolic212.org May God bless you until next time. May God's face shine.